Good afternoon. Political parties get ready for key dates in 2022 as Ekiti and Oshun governorship elections loom. Civil society organizations urge INEC to learn from FCT area council election as two governorship elections draw closer. Also on political update, PDP Governors Forum speaks on the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. Plus, as the APC National Convention draws closer, we will speak with a former governor and senator on the prospects for the party in 2022 and the theory of politics for development. We have these and more on the lineup. I am Mie Ogedi, your anchor. Over the weekend, the chairmanship election in the six area councils of the Federal Capital Territory showed that the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and the All Progressives Congress, APC, got three seats each via the ballot. In the six area councils in the FCT chairmanship election has been released. From Abaji Area Council, APC won with 7,280, while the PDP polled 4,062 votes and ADP 25. We cannot go into declaring a candidate winner because the winning party here does not have a candidate that we can return as a winner. From Guagualada, APC polled 11,000 125 votes, PDP 9,597, and Abga got 106 votes. The great Abubakar of the APC, having satisfied the requirement of the law, is hereby declared the winner. While from Kuje, PDP emerged winner with 13,301 votes. APC 7,694 votes and LP 79. Suleiman Abdullah Sabo of PDP, having certified the requirements of the law, is hereby declared the winner. And from Buari Area Council, PDP polled 13,045 votes, while APC 7,697 and Abga. 603 votes. John Gabaya Shekwogwaza of PDP, having satisfied the requirements of the law, is hereby declared the winner. From Kwali Area Council, APC won with 7,646 votes, PDP 7,345, and ADP 70 votes. Sunday, Langladi Chia of APC, having satisfied the requirements of the law, is hereby declared the winner. And from Armak, PDP emerged winner with 19,302 votes, APC 13,240, and PRP. 287. That is 50 50 for PDP and APC for the FCT elections. Let's go to Another story still related to the FCT elections. The Nigerian Civil Society Situation Room and some other election observer groups have expressed the expectation that the lessons learned from the just concluded council elections in the Federal Capital Territory will greatly impact on the management body, INEC, to improve upon its operations in the forthcoming off season equity and ocean governorship elections. With the area council's election in the Federal Capital Territory described as successful by many, the Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room and some election observer groups believe that they were not without some irregularities. In some locations, votes were sold, you know, uh, uh, to the tune of 1,000 and 2,000, while we are also getting reports that some people took the money and voted for their conscience. 
there was a particular instance of a polling unit where the voters refused to vote because they were yet to be mobilized. We observe that the Beavers machine was deployed across all polling units. However, the usage of the Beavers was fraught with challenges. The floods recorded in the election are to serve as areas to be worked upon by the election management body INEC in the forthcoming Ekiti and Oshun State's governorship election, as well as the 2023 general elections. The security agents were present at most of the polling units visited. I think we need to commend the, the, the police and the security agencies in this area. The timely upload of polling units results on the INEC online portal will boost public trust and confidence in the election results declared by INEC. We commend INEC on all stakeholders for ensuring a peaceful election so far. Reported flaws in the functions of the Beavers machine transmission of election result processes, vote buying and selling, as well as voter apathy, topped the listed areas of concern for the election management body to address ahead of future elections. As the civil society groups are reacting to the election, INEC chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu is also meeting with resident electoral commissioners to ensure that no polling unit is without a voter. This becomes necessary in view of the experience in the FCT area council elections where about 600 polling units were without voters while others were over congested. While this lofty goal has been achieved in many states, there are still congested polling units uh, with between and polling units with between zero and 50 voters as we saw in some of the recent elections. Over the next few weeks, the Commission will intensify efforts to address the issue ahead of the forthcoming AKT and Oshun governorship elections and ultimately the 2023 general election. We will review and improve the functionality of the Beavers for biometric accreditation of voters in the forthcoming by-elections and off-season governorship elections before the 2023 general election. The Commission remains convinced that the deployment of technology in our elections safeguards the integrity of the vote and provides a better guarantee for electoral cred credibility than the best manual process. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, says the proceeds of crime bill before the National Assembly was born out of the federal government's desire to ensure transparency and accountability in the management of recovered looted funds and assets. Since the transmission of the proceeds of crime bill to the National Assembly by the President for consideration and passage, there have been questions and agitations from the public and existing agencies with similar mandates on what the bill specifically seeks to address among merits of the bill as explained by Attorney General of the Federation but and Minister of Justice Abu Bakr Malami at this meeting with the House Leader and Chairman of key committees is that the proceeds of Crime Recovery and Management Agency will be a one-stop shop with a database detailing all recoveries, their value, number and location for ease of access this, the minister says, will prevent loss of value and waste. EFCC, ICPC, police are not established to manage recovered assets. Their core mandate is distinct and separate from management of recovered assets. There is need for some level of uniformity both in conduct and attitude of the officers and in the process. House leader Al-Hassan Adudogu emphasized the need to create the legal instrumentality to take the anti-corruption fight a notch higher. It's a bill that has to do with the fundamental commitment and promise of Mr. President. I said fundamental because fight against corruption recovery of looted funds. I think these are some of the key cardinal principles of this government, even when we went around seeking for vote from our people. The Asset Recovery and Management Unit in the Office of the Attorney General is developing capacity and laying foundation preparatory to the passage and ascent of the bill.
Indeed, 2022 will be an interesting year in the political scene as political parties recalibrate for the push towards the 2023 presidential election. In about 10 days, the All Progressive Congress APC will undertake its much anticipated national convention. As party members just hold for positions, some have already planted their flags on the ground as far as the nation's seat of presidency is concerned. So, former governor of Zamfara State and also a former senator, His Excellency Senator Ahmed Sani, joins me today on Political Update. Your Excellency, are welcome to Political Update. Thank you very much. Your party convention is already just 10 days away from now. Do you have any fear about the success or otherwise of the convention that is coming up? Well, I, I think the consultations going on now will make it easier for the party to come up with a, a credible candidate and also credible candidate at all levels. Um, you know, politics is about discussions, consultations and negotiations, and I'm sure we are doing well. And uh, when we talk of conventions like this, the governors in your party in the various states are in quote, very powerful. Are you seeing that as a threat to the convention, the no, position of the governors? The governors are key stakeholders. You know, from the president who is the leader of the party at the national level, the governors are leaders of party at the various state levels. Therefore, I think uh, the, the dialogue, consultation, discussion between Mr. President, the governors and key stakeholders, the national assembly members, even the state assembly members, all those who are really concerned with the election, either by way of delegates or by way of being the key stakeholders. The consultation is going on, and I'm sure that uh, things will go very well for APC. And uh, there is this common saying that those that have tested or been in the corridor power once, they always want to be there. You being a former governor of Zafara State, former senator, do you want to retire or you want to still be active in the system? Well, I've already declared my interest in the seat of uh, the Mr. President, and I'm sure that uh, the whole nation is aware about it. There are so many associations and groups under the RIMA support organization, YSO, working very hard to mobilize Nigerians across the country, from the south to the west, from the east to the north, and I'm sure they are doing very well. Okay, but uh, this issue of uh, zoning, though it's not in the constitution, but a kind of gentleman agreement in some instances, do you think uh, the pendulum will swing to your favor in case your party comes up with some gentleman arrangement in terms of rotation or zoning of the presidency? I one, think you are one, from one, the one, yeah. not, not west. North west, yes. Yeah. When people talk about gentleman agreement, there is gentleman agreement between two individuals, but or between two small groups. But when you have a political party that cut across the nation, women, children, I mean adults, and uh, uh, elders of the party, stakeholders of the party, who will sit down and negotiate on behalf of all Nigerians? There is nothing like gentleman agreement in politics. Politics are about election. And uh, parties are governed by constitution. The whole country, democracy, is governed by constitution. It's a law, rule of law. So you cannot go outside the constitution and say you want to create something else called uh, dialogue or discussion about uh, or negotiation or agreement or understanding. So it has to be anything that you want to do must be in line with Nigerian constitution or the political party's constitution. Anything outside the constitution does not but be, even if it's outside the law. Constitution, I think, yeah. uh, naturally, more on moral basis, do you think uh, you, the power should still be maintained? In that, in that you see, morality is low. <laughs> you cannot determine morality by just thinking about what is moral. How do you define morality? It's the law that dictates what is moral and what is illegal. So, so, so by your own judgment, uh, if, uh, for instance, you take the presidency. Yes. Would you still hand over to Inotona? If for instance you are elected. See, it's about Nigerians will decide who becomes their leader. Okay. It is not individuals that say, oh, I want to be president. Of course, God is in control. Christians and Muslims believe that only God gives power. So if you aspire to be president, and God has destined that you are going to be the president, and the entire, he will make the people to accept uh, you. And, and you. And you are very positive. It seems uh, you have started even seeing the vision that you will, will be there someday. 
Well, uh, as I'm talking to you now, yeah. I have uh, scientifically, we are using uh, applications. And, uh, and people and are feeling The informed. numbers are to your favor. Uh, definitely, <laughs> we have more than 10 million supporters I'm talking to okay, now. Okay, but let's take this report. We'll still come back and discuss more on that yeah. and other issues. So that's all right. The PDP Governors Forum has urged President Muhammad Buhari to sign the electoral bill into law. They made the call at a meeting in Nenegua, Bielsa State, where they reviewed the state of the nation and the preparations of the party towards next year's election. End of the closed door meeting, Governor Okeze Ikbazu of Abia State, who is the vice chairman of the PDP Governors Forum, urged President Muhammad Obuari to immediately sign the Electoral Act Amendment Bill into law and congratulated PDP for winning 43 out of 62 councillorship positions in the recently concluded area council elections. The governors also expressed displeasure over the issue of contaminated fuel supply to Nigerians recently and urged government to bring perpetrators to book. The cut decision on police trust fund was also welcomed while they maintained that the revenue mobilization allocation and fiscal commission should expedite action on the new revenue allocation formula to increase allocations to states and local governments. The figures of consumption ascribed to Nigerians appear fictitious and bloated. They called for proper investigation to be conducted on this matter. The forum once again deplored the way and manner the CBN is being run as an alternate government. Indeed, it has become a government within the government. They also commended Governor Diri on his achievements in two years in office. Still on PDP, the national chairman of the People's Democratic Party has assured the Senate caucus of the party that the National Working Committee will return the party to the winning ways. Let's take a listen. <laughs> This interactive session of the PDP NWC with the senators elected on the party's platform is to further strategize on how to position the party towards future electoral victory. This party must try to be uh, all inclusive in all its decision making processes so that once the leadership is united, the rest of the party will be united and very soon will return the party to its winning ways. Meanwhile, ahead of 2023 presidential election, a group under the auspices of coalition of concerned groups have added their voices on power shift to the south and the need for younger candidates to emerge come 2023 in the PDP. Power shift to the south is not just viewed, but is known to be the major stabilizing factor with respect to 2023 elections. The coalition appealed to the party to exhibit high level of transparency in its presidential primary election. His Excellency, former governor and uh, former senator, Yerima is still with me in the studio. Yes. He just uh, watched uh, that clip and said, uh, power going to the south, 2023, we're going to be a stabilizing factor. Yeah. Uh, and probably if I want to turn it around, <coughs> power does not go to the south side, there will be instability, in quote anyway. Yeah. But that is on a lighter note. As a former yeah. governor of uh, Zamfara State, Zamfara is in the news, not always for the good reasons, insecurity, insecurity. Do you, when you were a governor, did you see this coming? And presently, are you at least playing advisory role to ensure that uh, that situation is arrested? I never saw it coming because I thought uh, the system we had uh, established in Zamfara if it had been followed, uh, there wouldn't have been this kind of problem. What was the system? The, first of all, you see, we mobilize people and make sure that uh, we empower them through agricultural program, through education. Uh, in agriculture, by the time I handed over, I left over 100,000, 150,000 metric tons of uh, grains. After Mr. President Oshua Basenjo bought more than 50,000 tons of grain because we gave farmers loans through a program of agriculture that I call the Para Comprehensive Agricultural Pro Revolution Program. And in education, we make sure that uh, both women and I mean, girls and uh, boys are giving free education up to secondary school level. And tertiary institutions, we make sure that uh, we give scholarships that are quite enough 
to pay for their tuition fees and maintenance. And uh, the poverty alleviation program uh, um, was used to empower people, and everybody has something doing. The major problem in security in Nigeria is poverty and illiteracy, ignorance. You see, poverty can make you to go and take arms and looking for what to eat. And ignore, ignorance of uh, both religious and Western education, uh, Muslim or Christian, cannot take, if he's properly acquainted or aware, made aware of his religion, will not take arms to go and fight. But then Zanfarad also attributes uh, the issue of gold and mining as some of the factors responsible for insecurity. No, and those, here you are talking about only poverty and uh, Those education. are just political statements. There is nothing like that. The little uh, illegal mining going on is not enough to create that kind of level of insecurity. It is just poverty and illiteracy. Do you also visit Zanfara frequently? No? Yes. In fact, I, like you said, I you normally... a very long convoy. I normally... Escort kind of. No. I have uh, only two cars, following one security vehicle and my car. But I want to assure you that uh, we are discussing with both uh, at the post national level, Mr. President and other stakeholders and the Empire State. And very soon, I think you have heard that the thing is going down and uh, the governor is going to do well, better, in terms of poverty alleviation. And uh, he's making so, so much effort to ensure that uh, the agricultural program that we had started, Zakaref, will have been revived at least from next year. You will hear things that are going are, to be are, better. are you in good terms with the governor in terms of working with him to ensure that this problem is solved? He was my commissioner, the first commissioner for local government. When his politics started, he contested for local government election. And because he was very clever, very good, very reliable, when he lost the chairmanship, I made him the commissioner for local government to survive the person who defeated him. And today, the person that uh, defeated him, who was his chairman and he was commissioner, has been his commissioner for local government. It's just of reason that he really deployed him to higher education. So I think uh, things would be better by his grace of God because he, is, he has listening ears and he's doing a lot of consultation with the security agencies at national level. Probably you have uh, maybe close contact with some of those bandits, not, I, but as somebody that is in the political system, yeah. not any, you know, on the negative side, but as individuals, maybe you have encountered one or What are their uh, These complaints? bandits, you do I have anybody who has <laughs> contact with them because they are living in the bush and uh, they, they don't allow their telephone lines uh, even to have security, don't even have access to their telephone lines. So it's very difficult to get in touch with them. The government started negotiating initially. Some of them came out, but uh, in the end, they went back to their bush. Okay, that is good. So on the, on the last line, let's say also your word of advice to your party as the convention is fast approaching. We have some three, four top candidates trying to vie for the number one seat in your party. So what uh, advice will you give? My advice is that they have to have fear of God and be transparent in whatever they are doing. Because you can see from the election in uh, FCT, uh, people are no longer, uh, be, be, you know, they know what to, what to do. Some people will take money and still vote for <laughs> the candidate of the question. So Nigerians are getting more and more enlightened as far as politics is concerned. So we have to be, uh, we have to have fear of God and transparent in whatever we do. Justice, equity, and fairness is the way to solution for all the political problems we have. It's, it has been a very insightful moment with you, Your Excellency, former Governor of Zamfara State and uh, former Senator and Presidential Oakville. Thank you and very probably much. Probably I'm going to be your South Heart Coordinator. We are very <laughs> much welcome, very much welcome. <laughs> that, that is the much you can take on today's edition of Political Updates. Do join us again on Friday, the same station, the same time, for another insightful package.